graffiti. The word is derived from the Italian graffiere, which means to strike. Graffiti can be found in the caves of Stone Age men and in the streets of ancient Roman cities. Meet Le Crinonas. Perhaps the most controversial and famous graffiti artists of the 1970s. Graffiti may have started in the late 1960s in New York City, but it exploded on the scene in the 1970s, due in no small part to the work of Lee Quinones. A major writer of that time, he was a controversial figure because some viewed his art as pure vandalism, while his works are also seen as sending political and social messages in an artistic fashion. His works were exhibited on the trains of the New York City subway system and later on the handball courts of the city. He is controversial because, although graffiti is a crime, it did not stop Quinones from expressing his artistic emotions. Quinones started drawing as an artist. He was influenced by Japanese post-war science fiction master films such as Godzilla, an anime series, such as Speed Racer and Temple of the White Lion, the images of the Vietnam battlefields that he saw on television also had a huge influence on his artwork. The 1970s were a New York City nightmare. Crime was everywhere. Unemployment was high, especially for minority youth. The city had no money, the federal government was not going to help, and parts of the city were burning down. Quinona says, At the time, it was said, it was wrong for you to do that, but it was wrong for society to forget about a lot of young people. The Bronx was burning, the president had said the city should drop dead. Out of necessity, we invented an art form. It came from very young people that didn't necessarily have any art history to stand on. They were creating art history without a script in their hand. Quinones put his art on the train. In this way, it was just the most exposure. The train became the way he could get the attention of people from all over the city who had never go to his neighborhood to see his art. It was also his way of making the subway beautiful. Was it a chance of science or standards? He certainly was not playing by the rules, but to Quinones, it was all about the art. Graffiti is an art, and if art is a crime, let us draw for clear ball. He put out a statement on his famous Howard the Duck piece on the handbag court by his old straw. Quinones had moved from the train to the handbag court. Quinones's late 1979 train mural, Stop the Bomb, questioned the continuation of the Cold War with the phrase, War is Selfish Death. His 1977 mural, Jesus Christ Superstar, includes pictures of soldiers, factories, and Jesus with the words, forgive them. It shows his opposition to war. Quinones joined with others to form the Fabulous Five, who became famous for whole car graffiti. The IRT number no. four train in 1976 was their greatest work. Disney characters, snowmen, science fiction, cartoons. He said, I think it was the greatest thing ever done on the IRT number no. 4 train. Quinones and his supporters saw graffiti as beautiful as art. It reminds you that there is some life around you, Quinones said. But in 1972, it became a political issue. Mayor John Lindsay declared a war on graffiti, calling it an epidemic of thoughtless behavior. He said that graffiti artists had mental health problems. Laws were passed against it. The science invented a chemical to make city was resistant to it. You do not see much graffiti on the trains anymore, but Quinones' work lives on in art galleries and museums. In a city that once opposed graffiti artists, the Museum of the City of New York had an exhibition of their famous work. Norman Mailer wrote a book, The Faith of Graffiti, calling it pure art. Graffiti is now a collector's item. Vinnie Pacifico, a New York businessman, collects it by the hundreds and calls it art that communicates in color like Picasso, but also uses language. Eric Clapton bought the entire Lee Quinones exhibit of graffiti on canvas. Lee Quinones was once viewed as a vandal. Now he works with Tropical America. His artwork has been used by Knightley and Ford. It seems that 
society's view of its graffiti has evolved through the years.